Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are here again on a miracle revival hour. I ask, O oh God, that you will speak to us your word. For thy word is truth. Your word carries healing, carries miracle, carries the grace of revival. Therefore, let there be manifestations of your word upon our lives this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, mighty God. Let the sick be healed. Let wisdom be released. Let there be an impartation. Thank you, precious Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be talking this evening. It takes contention. To enforce dominion. It takes contention to enforce dominion. If you are not willing to contend, forget about living in dominion. Number one, I want you to know that life does not give you what you admire or desire. But gives you what you demand and contend for. You said, oh, I admire this. Life will give it to me. You will dwell in that Ram, we're not achieving anything because life from the cradle to the grave is made up of unbroken risk. Life will never give you what you admire or desire, but we give to you what you demand and content for. Again, life is spiritual and to live it, you must be spiritual. I want you to understand these two things. Yes. You admire it, but you might demand for it. You must contend for it. I want us to look at Ecclesiastic chapter 7. Ecclesiastic chapter 7, verse 7. I want you to keep that test there for some time. Surely oppression make it a wise man mad. Can we just look at that scripture and look deeply into it so that we'll be able to get all that is inside that scripture? Surely oppression make it a wise man mad. I want you to understand the, the meaning of oppression. For you to be oppressed it is your right. Someone is oppressing you not to step into your right. It is in your father's will that this and this shall be yours. Now, somebody is out there to dispossess you of what your father has willed for you. And you know it is your father's will and what they want to take out of you was given to you by your father. You know the truth. This land, this property, this house, 
belongs to my father. In his will, he said, it's my own. Now somebody had just come up there and said, no, you can't have it. In my place, when what belongs to your father is taken away from you, it's assumed your father did not have a child. That the children are irresponsible. The children... As a matter of fact, in those days, not now, when people are married anyhow, if you go to marry a girl and they know that you are the one whose father's property was taken away from him and he could not say a finger, and they will believe you can't take care of their daughter. Amen. But then he said, the wise man is what? Mad. When we talk about madness, that somebody is mad. What? What belongs to me? You want to take it? Hey! You are a dead man. Now a man pronouncing death on another man. The man that had the other man say, you are a dead man. Listen to me. If he does not have ball, he will not sleep that night. Because you have touched a tiger's tail. That is fight to finish. You can't take what belongs to me. You can't oppress me. Therefore, he is mad. Listen. And many of you are aware that no madman is gentle when it comes to some certain issues. And many of you have seen where some of these good, wonderful Roman Catholic sisters, when they want to take the child of a mad woman because they want to take care of that child. How many of you are aware that woman becomes very violent? They, you don't take women to hold her. But you take men. Even policemen are involved at times. Because the other side of her, you will say it. Why? As long as she was concerned, you want to oppress her. And she was, she's she will never take no for an answer. She will run after you. She's willing to bite you. She's willing to use her leg, her fist, everything. Why? I carried that child nine months. I gave back to that child and I boom with that child. That child boom my companion and you are taking that child from me. Not me. We die on this matter. And that is why they will put the child in a motor and drive they make sure she will not be able to trace that place. Otherwise, she's coming. If it's Abudu, he knows that from Agbo to Abudu is so much, many kilometers, it's coming there. If it's in Oguashuku, he will try from Agbo to Oguashuku. It's coming for the child. And listen to me. He's going to bite you to the bone. If she succeeds in grabbing you, the hand will go deep into your flesh. Why? She's mad. She's mad. She's mad. Surely oppression make it a wise man. Somebody say a wise man. He's a wise man. He's aware that what you are doing is not right. You are taking advantage. And he's going to fight you back. Praise God. You want to take advantage over me? What belongs to me, you want to take it, you want to oppress me. No. I want to ask you. You are a believer, a child of the living God. The book you are carrying is the book of covenant. 
It is the will of God for your life that is in that book. But the devil severally has oppressed us irrespective is within the will of our father that this is the will of God for me. And we have taken those things for an, I mean it doesn't matter. It's okay. We explain it away. But he said a wise man will be marked. At any length, I'm going with you. That is my property. You can't take it. That is within the will of my father. You can't take this away from me. It is not the will of God that a witch should kid you as a believer. It is not the will of God for you to be poor. It is not the will of God for you to be a bywall and a prover. But a wise man who said, no, I have understanding of what the will of God is for my life. You can't oppress me. I'm sorry. It can never be. As long as I have breath in my nostril, it must be as it is written according to my father's will. And that is what you must do. Shout hallelujah. Amen. That's why I started by saying that life will not give you what you admire or desire but gives you what you demand and what you contend for. And I want to also so, say that it is the spirit that rules over the physical. Life is spiritual and to live it, you must be spiritual. Hallelujah. You must contend against the enemy. As long as you are in this world. The Bible says since the John, the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God is preached and everyone presses into it. If you are not willing to press, you will die at your spot. For you to live a life of dominion, you must contend against what want to stand against the will of God for your life. Oh, it came to a time Festus listened to Paul. After some time he said, Paul, you are beside yourself. He said to Paul, too much learning. Learning will give you knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge uh, uh, learning will give you wisdom. And learning will make you man over some issues. Now, let me tell you. There are some of us, we don't listen to television because of the no lies going on. You know the senators are lying. You know the president is lying. You know all they are telling you is garbage and stories and no rubbish. So, for you not to provoke yourself, you avoid watching television. I do that several. I'm too wise for you to mess up. I know you are stealing. I know that all you did to bring Naira down and all this is a lie. It's gone up again. You try to fool men because you feel they are foolish. Hallelujah. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 24. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning that made thee mad. Much learning. You are too wise. You know it so much. And that is why you are like a madman. You are misbehaving. That is why the enemies are against you. 
He refused for them to cheat him and humiliate him. He refused to be messed up. And he said to him, too much learning, too much knowing, you are too wise to take the garbage they are feeding you with. You don't worry tomorrow. Say no, today. I don't have the patience to wait for tomorrow. Today is my day of miracle. It's my day of transformation. My day of healing. I do not take no for an answer. You can't hold what belongs to me. And you are asking me, hold on. Tomorrow we see to it. No, we see to it right now. It takes contention to enforce dominion. If you refuse to contend for what belongs to you, you will die a loner. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Festus said to him, you are beside yourself. You are beside yourself. Ah! In your mouth, all these things are coming and Paul. Too much learning. That make demand. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. Hallelujah. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. There is nothing natural there to demonstrate. All is spiritual. And that is why I say to you, life itself is spiritual and you must live it, you must be what? Spiritual. And here we were told, Bob declared, he said, my sayings to you, I did not come to entice you with words of men. But words of man's wisdom. But I am here to demonstrate of the one spirit and two power. Somebody said that is for us. If you are a child of God, listen, you don't have need of rhetorics. You don't have need for storytelling and peddling. Praise God. And you are there to demonstrate the spirit and power. Spirit and power. Anything short of that, you are talking garbage. You are preaching the word. He said, the word I preach to you is what? Praise God. The spirit and life. Hallelujah. That is the word. He said, we are here to demonstrate the spirit and power. And every child of God, two things you are meant to demonstrate. Spirit and what? Power. If you can't, then your Christianity is questionable. You will not ascend to your throne. Though you are a king, you will die a slave. Because it takes the spirit and power to do what? For you to live the life of dominion. You can't close your eyes and see things turning against you. And you are there telling stories. No. You cannot. You cannot. Hallelujah. The end time church is a church of power. It is a ruling and a reigning church. Not a church beaten, bastardized, humiliated. I mean oppressed. No. They are too wise for you to oppress. They are too wise for witches to oppress them. They are too wise for the occult to oppress them. They are too wise for poverty to oppress them. Why? Because they are wise, full of knowledge. And when you come 
with evil, with oppression, they show you their madness. They show you we are calm. That's not because stupid. They show you, yes, we are gentle. Does not mean we are idiots. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If you must reign and occupy till he comes, you must enforce your dominion. You must enforce it. What is going on now is a season. The world has just come into a season. The church has just come into a season. If you look at the happenings all over the world, not just Nigeria, the economic quagma is all over the world. Terrorism is all over the world. If this one is not happening here, I know that it is happening there. Now, these are prophetic calendar that you and I cannot watch. You can't pray them off. But yet, you are here. Those things are not meant to touch you. Those things are not meant to do or touch you. They may touch unbelievers. Not you as a child of the living God. Carrying the dunamis of God in your life. No. That is not the intention of God. And the Bible says he has not appointed us unto rot. The only way you can rule. You can only reign and rule by power. And if you are powerless. Or you have power. You do not know how to use it. God is not to be blamed. He has given you the package of his will is in your hands. If you can't tap what is in there, you have no right to blame God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. That's the key. Now listen. I will show you a typical example. There are many of you sitting here hearing the sound of my voice. There is a place that is meant for you. Someone else is sitting there. Many are going through delay not because God wanted to delay them. But they refuse to step into their inheritance. I'm sorry. What at times I ask my people, I ask within myself, what is this man thinking now? Is he happy where he is now? What is he thinking? What is he thinking? I discover a lot of people don't think. You find your life running in a spot and you are not thinking, then something is wrong. Hear me. I told them June is a must. I must have a crusade in June. And you ask me. You are having miracle night. You are looking for money for miracle night. And you are asking to have a crusade in June. That is going to cost you quite some millions. Can I hear somebody say it's possible? I didn't hear you. Can you say it like you mean it? It's possible. Because we were told... The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to my God. He says, silver and gold is mine. He also asked me, come, let's reason together. Let's settle that matter. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. There are one million a million and million ways that God will give you a miracle. All God is saying, do you believe me? 
Do you believe what I said in the world? In the book of covenant you are carrying. Do you believe it? And are you running in line with it? Do you believe the word that says you shall decree it then and it shall come to pass? Do you believe you are a child of the most high God? Do you believe it? Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. That is one scripture I love so dearly. He said, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand. Somebody said, God said he has given into their hands. Please talk to me. God said, I have given into thy hands. Sihon, king of where? Sihon, the Amorite, king of where? Of his bond. And look at the next thing he said. And his land. Oh, please, please, please. He said, I have given into thy hand, Sihon, the Amorite, king of his bond, and his land. Look at what he said there. Begin to possess it. Somebody said, begin to possess it. And contend with him in battle. Did you hear that? Listen, say, I have given you. Listen, what, bring that book. Whatever you see here, God has given you. Are you hearing me? Listen, God has given you. That spiritually is subtle. Physically, it may not be in your hand. It's when you take steps physically. And call what is in the spirit realm to physical dimension, then it becomes yours. Therefore, God is not to be blamed. He has given you whatever God said He has given, He has given. And whatever God has given, the devil will contend against it. But God said, Contend with Him in battle. Somebody said, Battle. Many of you are suffering from what is yours you are not able to take. You didn't hear what I said. I repeat, many of you are suffering what is yours you are unable to take. But it's yours. Listen, your name is written on it. It's yours. Hear me. You know J uh, Jacob? Jacob, he did not know that that is not his real name. Until he contended in battle, the truth of the matter came out. Oh God, somebody's not hearing me. Until you fight, the hidden truth will not be made manifest. Contend with him in battle. Fight. Fight. The weapons of our warfare, they are not canon. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down. Oh God. The strongholds that is holding your branch, you can pull it down. The stronghold holding your finances, you can pull it down. The stronghold holding your health, you can pull it down. The stronghold holding anything about your life, you can pull it down. Show me that man that is serene. I will show you a man who knows how to have a handshake with heaven. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You can never occupy until you are a constant visitor to the throne room. Oh, God. You will never be what you are ordained to be, except otherwise you are a constant visitor. To the throne. Times you call men for prayer, their faces will swear. I know nothing else. If it's in the book, 
The only way I can call it down is by entering into the inner chamber. And he said, How many of you have really studied the word that say Matthew 11 verse 12? Can we look into it? I want us to study that word and look deeply into it. Why that statement was made the way it was made. Somebody say, I'm from the days of John the Baptist. Listen, listen, listen. He said, from the days. Hear me. Why is it that before John the Baptist came, there was peace? There was peace. There was no violence. There was no opposition in the heavens. The ministry of one man brought it. Oh God, if somebody's not hearing me, listen, there was peace, there was no wahala everything was working everything good but as soon as John came into the scene who came to introduce the Messiah and to make sure the pathway oh Every demon that was sleeping woke up. Listen. What was the preaching of John? Repent or you perish. For the kingdom of God was at hand. That was not only ten. I said that was not only ten. Where's my boy here? Come. Oh God. Somebody. How many, how many of you want revelation today? Now listen. John did not only say repent or perish for the kingdom of God is at hand. He said every tree that does not bear fruit will be cut down. That was not it. That was not it. Before then, there was no preaching of repentance. Huh? You didn't hear what I said. Was there preaching of repentance? Now listen. That was not the only trouble he caused. You know the next trouble he caused? He put them in the water. Jesus had not died now. Are you hearing me? But burial and resurrection. Remember the Bible says he was crucified before the foundation of the earth was formed. Before he died, he died already. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Before the blood was shed, the blood was already shed. Is that not in your Bible? He said before the foundation of the earth was formed, before this, your earth was formed. He will have been crucified. And here, John, the hidden mystery, unknown to humanity, the hidden mystery that even demons do not know, John brought it to existence. Now, res dead, resurrection. How many of you have seen bees? Now listen. No, no, no. Go and sit down. Let me, let me ask you. How many of you? Sorry, it's going to be a little bit sarcastic. But let me say this. How many of you are aware that you see flies? But no dead body around. Nothing. But all of them are flying up and down because somebody misbehaved, fouled the air. Are you hearing me? All of them are quarreling now. Is there any substance? Well, come and talk to me. Is there any substance? Listen. 
all demons when that mystery was applied. Ha! Ah! I said, no. We must kill this man. We must set him up. He must be out of the yet. I, it's enough. We, we were careful. We were calm about his ministry. Now, he has gone too far. Too far. And they jumped into the mouth of Herod. He beheaded him. Jesus made a, a confessional statement. He said, Among God that was born of a woman, there is none as great, listen, as John the Baptist. I tried to find out what is the mystery behind his greatness. You mean he's greater than Abraham? Let's remove Adam because he was not born of a woman. But Abraham was born of a woman. Moses was born of a woman. The rest of them were born of a woman. Is that not true? But there is, they say there's one greater than them all. The Lord himself made that statement. What did he come to do? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He will increase and must decrease. That was his major last message. He was out of the way. When Jesus had they killed him, he left the city and went outside that land. And they met him. He was sober. He said, let me tell you one mystery. Among all men born of a woman, there is none that is as great as John the Baptist. Can you imagine what, how it reflected to Jesus himself? He knew he was going to hang on the cross. The one that came to make straight the way has now gone. I am here. I'm the one to pay the price. He's gone to the master that sent him. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. He said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. The violent take it by force. What does that mean? There are oppositions on your way to take what has been ordained for you. There is an opposition. The adversary, there's a barricade standing between you and your miracle. Your name is on that miracle. But there are barricades the one that is spiritually gentle can tap into it. Only that man that is spiritually violent will tap into it. Friends, we may be gentle outwardly, but spiritually we should be violent. Can tell somebody say be violent. Remember, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Now, there is something you must develop. And except you develop it, you will not excel. How many of you are aware? There are, that's what we call foolish humility. 
at his baseless. Praise God. It's just like now. I come into a meeting and you carry me and put me at the back of a chair in the pew. How many of you know I wouldn't take that rubbish? Never. It's not humility. It's a dethronement. Oh yes. Except I decide to sit there on my own. Not that you brought me, bring me, you invite me to your church and you know me as a man of God and you put me at the back bench and you kept quiet. I don't know who was with me. We walked into Ecumenical Center, National Christian Center now. Somebody went with me. And while okay, men of God were jammed everywhere. Could be your husband. Okay. They were, he was preaching. I came in tiptoed, thinking no one saw me. I went at the back and sat. Waloke said excuse me sir I have seen you you will affect my message for a golden fish has no hiding place please usher apostle Chris to the front I didn't want to because I wanted to escape before the time but they have to drag me to the front. I have to honor him. Fusing at that time will not be good. So there are some certain things that can never be. If you allow it, it's because you do not understand the mysteries of existence. But there's what we call superiority consciousness. I repeat, somebody says superiority consciousness. Please say it like you mean it. One more time. Now, if you are yet to develop that superiority consciousness, you will never step into your throne. You will not. You will not. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. And how many of you are aware? Militarily speaking, I have some police officers here. How many of you are aware? No matter how strong you are, you cannot send one policeman to go and arrest a robber. One robber. How many of you know that? Is that true? Militarily, a battalion can't attack a battalion. It takes a brigade. That is the military nomenclature. You cannot take the same number to attack the same number. It takes a company to attack a platoon. Praise God. For you to bind this strong man, you must be superior to that strong man. Come and talk to me. You must be superior to that strong man. Therefore, we were told that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
The power that is against you, you are bigger than that power. Bro, we take you on this lane. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And had raised us up together. Oh my goodness, I wish. If he had said he had raised me up, he didn't say together. I would have questioned it. But he said together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is to say, where Christ is seated, I am seated there. Is that true? Please, is that true? Revelation chapter 10, chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Somebody said, it's cast down. Somebody said, it's cast down. Why it was cast down, I was taken up. Did you hear what I said? The accuser of the brethren. What's his name? The devil. The Bible says he was what? He was what? Cast down. But what happened to me? In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. I was taken up. Listen. I'm a superior officer. His exalted position was taken away from him. He was cast down. I was taken up. Therefore, I must understand this superiority that the devil is not at my level. And the Bible says, Whatsoever I bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. It doesn't matter what the name of that demon is. God said, as long as I say it, heaven will react. Hear me. For you to live the life of dominion, you must contend against your enemies. You must take what belongs to you. You must enforce your dominion. Your rulership. You must enforce it. He said, contend with him in battle. Whatever God has made or promised settles the matter. The rest is you we must ask. If you refuse to step into what belongs to you, you can't blame God. Believe us in Christ sense of God we are not ordinary you must walk with the sense of superiority I give you example when you see a true witch they are very proud and the reason they are proud is because of the power the word elemental power how much more you and I that carry the ultimate power The ultimate power. Say to the Lord, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Friends, for you to reign on this earth, you must carry the power of the living God. You are called to demonstrate the spirit and power. And that is the only way you can occupy You must walk in that superiority. You must walk, oh God of Israel. Matthew 28, verse 18, the last scripture. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. I 
And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Somebody say, Oh, I didn't hear you. Say it louder now. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I want to speak on that scripture so that you will understand the mystery behind that word. Somebody say, all power. Can I ask you a question? Was he looking for power? Was there any time he was powerless? The Bible says he was equal with God and counted it not robbery to be equal with God. Is that true? Is that true? The power is telling you all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. You know what he's telling you? He received the power. He's the head of the church. He received the power for his body. Did you hear what I said? He received the power. When he died and resurrected, all power was handed over to him in heaven and earth. For who? For the church. For the body. And before he leave, he said, occupy till I come. I go to my God, your God. I go to my Father, your Father. As my Father has sent me, so have I sent you. The glory my Father has given to me, the same glory I give to you. Can I ask you a question? Why are we not occupying our rightful position? Why are we being messed up? We walk as people that have no hope. We walk as people that are hopeless. He said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. The enemy is aware. That you are a superior officer. But he knows. Not all of us know it. And therefore he takes advantage of our ignorance. Lack of knowledge has brought insult. Listen. We must change our mentality. Our way of thinking. Our way of reasoning. You must begin to reason as a superior officer. You must begin to reason that the one that is in the world is inferior to you. That which is inferior to you. Listen. Until you exhibit who you are, you will never manifest it. I want you to stand up. You exhibit who you are. You will never manifest it. Lay your hand on your head. Oh God, I bring these ones before your throne of grace, my Father. We are in a dangerous and delicate time of our lives. The perilous time we are face to face with it. The times of falling away we are right face to face with it. Israel is a symbol. It's our signpost. We can see the happenings in the land of Israel. 
dear Lord, I'm asking, give us spiritual knowledge. Give us revelational knowledge and the spirit of wisdom. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let us agree with your word that will bring us manifest divinity here on earth. And dear Lord, I ask, grant us the grace to see with the eyes of the spirit. Dear Lord, because if we know better, we'll be emboldened. My Father, the happenings in this nation should not frighten any believer. For if there be a time that we should go into our inner chamber and create things and come out and manifest them is now. For all things are possible to him to heart that believe it. Let barricades be removed. Let limitations be rooted out. Let every demonic planting that brings heaviness to men, when they want to study the word, when they want to pray, they become heavy. Let it be taken away at this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, I bind you. I limit your operations against these lives. Is there any sick among you? I rebuke that infirmity. You sickness, I cause you. Die right now. Come out of them and go to the abyss. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive Every burden that followed you here, that burden is lifted. I command that burden to be lifted. In the name of Jesus, let that burden be lifted. Let that burden be lifted. Let that burden be lifted. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you honor and adoration. As we go, my Father, you will take us back home in peace. Baba, steer us up. Steer us up. Steer up the hearts of men. Let there be a longing, a desire to be what you have ordained us to be. We give you all the thanks and all. I demand whatever that is not working in your life, financially and otherwise, I command them to begin to work. Where they have forgotten you, I demand right now, let them begin to remember you right now. In the name of Jesus, receive. Receive grace to function. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. God will begin to order your steps where good things are happening. Receive it now. Receive it now. I soak your feet with the blood of Jesus. Every door shut against you. I command that door. I call for the axe. I command the axe that he gave to me for war. I break that door with the axe. I command that door. I bring it down in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. You will not lack good things. Only sickness you will lack. You will lack death. You will lack failure. But good things shall follow you and your entire family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father, for I pray in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Tomorrow, we're having night vigil. That night vigil will be 
in your branches. But those who prayed with me this morning will be coming down. We'll pray for two hours. We close. Nine vigil is nothing. I can't cancel it. It's not possible. Therefore, by 12 midnight, and those of you praying with me, you meet me. All the pastor's wives in the branch, all the pastors, and all the deacons, and those praying with me, you meet me in zone two, the prayer altar there. And the Lord bless you as you come in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, the ladies' feast is coming on Saturday. Is that true? It's coming on Saturday. Make sure you are there. And that is more reason we are coming for prayer. Because God said to me, this will be, and many more of our sons and daughters will be coming up with what God will lay in their hearts to do. We must not suffocate them. Before they came, I have been informed by the Spirit of God. Through that means, great things will begin to happen in this ministry. I want you to know, in case your heart is deceiving you, no. I'm in the center, perfect will of God. When I look at what is happening in Asaba now, what the pastor there, and Malachi's son, what they are doing there, I marveled. You never can know how these children can go. Just throw them into the hand of God. Praise God. Please take this meeting seriously. I'm giving all my heart for it. And I've declared tomorrow fasting for leaders. Oh yes. Pray about the meeting. Pray about the meeting. All leaders, both branches. Take a fast. We should live a fasted life. Take a fast. And pray. On Sunday, I'll be declaring a major fasting. Because the miracle night is going to be indeed miracle night. And that night, we are going to set on fire caskets. We will set caskets on fire in the name of Jesus. We are going to break many things that miracle night. Inform your friends about it. The God of Israel bless you. Where is the man on duty?